This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, the Hazleton Area School Board is getting ready to vote on a budget. We'll talk about some of their options next. Thank you all for checking out FYI News 13 on SSPTV or SSPTV.com. I'm Ken Karen. Here's your Wednesday headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The Hazleton Area School District is one step closer to a new budget. After committee meetings last night, business manager Anthony Reba explained two of the options under consideration. We had five plans we went over, um, five options last week in our budget meeting. We're narrowing it down to about three um, at this point. Um, the low option, and it depends on what the board will pick next week. Um, right now we're looking at an option where um, Luzerne County would stay the same in their tax rate, Schuylkill County would go up slightly, and Carbon County would go down slightly. That was pretty much the option that we're looking at the front runner right now the second option would be for um, to go up to the index the act one index um, so we're going to present these options next week and see which one the board uh, votes on okay and how um, did the district manage to reduce the deficit from last year okay, we um, we had some retirements we had some resignations we used our staff in a way that um, we tried to plug those holes so we didn't have to fill and hire people for those retirements or resignations. So that was a big way that we saved um, probably about $2 million over the whole movement of staff. The school board is expected to vote on the budget next Thursday at 6 p.m. Shots rang out around 4.30 this morning in the city of Hazleton. Police responded to the 100 block of East Maple Street. Five spent shell casings were discovered. Anyone with information is asked to contact Hazleton Police at 570-459-4940. Yesterday, we talked with a local doctor about children's allergies. Tonight, it's the adult's turn. Here's part two of our series on allergies with the Lehigh Valley Health Network. Dr. Jody Lenko joins us now from the Lehigh Valley Health Network as we continue our discussion on allergies. And doctor, when I was little, I had allergies, grew up, and I kind of, I don't know if I forgot about them, dealt with them, you know, better, or maybe I still have them, and I'm just not dealing with them. But what do you say for adults? What should they look out for? What should I look out for that maybe my allergies are still affecting me? Sure. So every uh, year around the, the springtime, a lot of people develop um, some seasonal allergies. And the signs and symptoms to look out for are sneezing, watery, itchy eyes, um, some scratchiness in your throat. And a lot of times the symptoms can be confused with a cold, so people think that they might just be getting a cold. But if it persists longer for the, than a couple of weeks, then oftentimes it can be allergies. And they often start in the spring months, especially in April or May, as the trees start to pollinate. So those are some of the early signs to look out for. Has it been bad this year, or is it just every year people say, oh, allergies are bad this year, and they're just bad across the board? <laughs> it's bad. It, it seems to be bad every year, but this year I think was particularly bad since we had a colder spring and everything seemed to blossom at once. So we are getting a lot more complaints about symptoms of allergies this year. How should adults stay on guard? Because you said they can develop new allergies. You told me if someone moves to a new area or something, how, how can you stay on guard for, um, toward this? So just looking out for the signs and symptoms and making sure your doctor um, is aware of them as well. They can be um, very helpful in determining if it's an infection or if it's um, something that you might be able to take an over-the-counter medication for to help your symptoms. Um, but especially if the symptoms last longer than a few weeks, um, it's something to think about. You might want to try a medication over-the-counter for an allergy, uh, like an allergy pill. How bad can it get? I mean, people really do suffer with this. Can it get pretty bad? Yeah, people can have um, lots of symptoms and it can really cause them some debility to miss work and school. Um, so it can, it can get really, um, really severe. And in those cases, oftentimes we refer to people to either an ear, nose or throat doctor or to an allergist uh, to have them tested to, to see if there is um, an indication for an allergy um, shot uh, per se to for a, for a specific allergen, say to a tree pollen or to something like that. What, what's some way maybe you could treat them or even at home to be a little bit preventative. So a lot of times uh, when the nice weather comes out, people open up their doors and windows, and that actually sometimes with people with severe allergies can make things worse. The uh, higher pollen burden inside the house can actually make your symptoms worse. So you have to avoid the temptation of opening up the windows and getting the fresh air as much as we like it in the, when the warmer months come. 
try to limit your exposure to outside as much as you can, um, especially on drier um, days. When days when it's a little bit rainier, it's okay to be outside. That tends to decrease the pollen count. And then it also depends on uh, the season. So the tree pollens are high in the spring and then they tend to go down in the summer months. The grass pollens are higher in the summer months. And then towards the fall, we end up with a different set of pollens. Um, and that's the, um, the weed pollens that come out in the fall. And everybody can have a variety of symptoms or, or none or all to a variety of the season. So it all depends. Um, but you really have to avoid the temptation of trying to get the fresh air in the house. Last thing I really want to ask you, especially with this topic, I guess because it's general, a lot of people either feel like ex experts or feel like they understand it. What do you think people maybe don't understand about allergies? Or um, I think f what they probably don't understand is that it can affect you for a couple weeks, if not longer. So people get frustrated that um, their symptoms aren't going away after a month. And really, as long as there's pollen out there, you can have symptoms. So uh, don't get frustrated and go to your doctor. They're, they're helpful. You know, go to your health care provider and they can give you some, some trusted advice. And there are a lot of medications that are very useful if you use them properly. So always ask your clinician. Thanks to the Lehigh Valley Health Network for helping us out with our allergy series. Well, coming up later on FYI, Little League Baseball is a topic of discussion during this week's edition of Dave Day with the Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman. And up next, we're talking about the McAdoo Fire Company Bazaar. My mouth is already watering just talking about it. They have some of the best food around. All right, let's go to break before I keep rambling. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Do you need a little bit of motivation to live a healthier lifestyle? Join us every Wednesday right here on FYI. We're joined with Rob Gold, and we have a special guest with us for the next couple weeks, and that's Frank Romero. He has been working out, getting you guys motivated to run a Hazleton half, which we've been telling you about. And we want to also talk not only about running and walking, but also about biking and their events for swimming as well. Right, Rob? Yep. The Hazleton Y, we host three multi-sport races. Uh, the Nescapec Duathlon we just held a week ago, the Anthracite Triathlon is coming up in July, and the Beware of Barracuda Triathlon is in the Eagle Rock Resort in September this year. Okay, so how do we get involved in those? Oh, you could join us on our Facebook page, Hazy Competitive Events, or go onto the YMCA website. Okay, and what is, uh, like, how do you participate in these events? Are there, do you have to qualify for them, or is it, any, is it open to anybody? Open to anybody, and some of the distances are shorter, like uh -huh. a sprint race has a 5K run at the end and a shorter swim and a shorter bike. You can also participate in these events in a relay. So if you're a swimmer or a biker or a runner, you can get a team, and two or three of you can tackle the whole event. Oh, that's nice. So you could really, like, find the best of the best and get on a team. All right, so Frank's story. Every week he's been telling us bits and pieces of his personal story on how you decided to live a healthier lifestyle. It started three years ago, just to get everyone up to date. And you not only lost some weight, but you got your whole family involved in this healthy living. That's right. Um, started off just uh, going out for a run, mm -hmm. and then... Um, was able to convince my wife to join me and now she got bit by the bug and she loves running just as much as I do and we were able to again pay it forward to my my daughter she's five years old and she uh, she's a bit of a runner herself now so she can she can run a 5k with with the best of them okay how did you get started you had that little niche to lose weight but how did you actually go out there and and start to run Actually, I started walking mm -hmm. as uh, as a group at work. We started doing a little bit of a walk, and then we did uh, Couch to 5K. Okay. Um, and the Couch to 5K program really got us kick-started. All right, so a little bit at a time. Again, if you want any information on walking, biking, swimming, Rob, you have those wonderful websites and Facebook pages that they can go to. Um, every week we're here. Today we're at Rails to Trails. Again, it's open to anybody. You can even bring your pets, your strollers. Uh, you could walk, you could run, you could jog, but just get out there, enjoy Mother Nature, and enjoy this beautiful weather. Every week we're here on FYI with Rob Gold. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. 
It was a sunglasses type of day and we thought our weather shot should reflect that. If you are watching a later rebroadcast of FYI, feel free to wear your sunglasses at night, although you might want to take them off now. It might be hard to see the weather, but I'll read it anyway. Here's our local weather forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, showers are likely mainly after 5 a.m., mostly cloudy night, low around 60 degrees. On Thursday, 60% chance of showers with thunderstorms possible afternoon, mostly cloudy. We'll get up near 70 degrees. Thursday night, 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy night with a low of 60. Friday clears up, mostly sunny with a high near 76. Friday night clouds move back in, low of 54. And then on Saturday, 30% chance of showers with thunderstorms possible after 2 p.m. Partly sunny day with a high of 76. Saturday night showers are likely with a possible thunderstorm, low of 64. Sunday again showers likely and again a possible thunderstorm, high of 82 degrees. And then on Sunday night a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy with a low around 64 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat including our ice cream and yogurt or some hot food including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. The McAdoo Fire Company's annual bazaar kicks off tomorrow on the grounds of the fire company. FYI intern Gabriella Valenti talked with Fire Chief Bob Leshko about why this festival is so important to both the firefighters and the community. All the proceeds from this event actually help us uh, put the lights on in the building, help us heat the building, help us pay for new equipment and maintain uh, our present equipment. Uh, so, so it's a very important fundraiser for us to be able to provide the services that we provide on a day-to-day -day basis. What's the menu? What's going to be on the menu? Uh, we're going to have uh, potato cakes, pizza, chicken fingers, French fries, uh, steak and cheese hoagies, chicken cheese steak hoagies, sausage and pepper, holushki, holupkis, hot dogs. Uh, the Boy Scouts will be here with their uh, kielbasa burgers again, I believe. And uh, we'll also have apple pies and apple dumplings. So we have a wide variety of stuff uh, with also a bunch of uh, kids games and, and a lot of great entertainment that we're going to have throughout the uh, weekend. You recently merged with the Keystone Fire Company. And can you explain how that works? Uh, right now, we've had our final approval through the courts in Schuylkill County for our merger with the Keystone Fire Company. Um, we're still awaiting. We need to sit down with our attorney jointly and uh, finish all the paperwork and everything else that will finally make it all legal and everything else. Uh, but as of right now, um, we're about 90% complete with that process. Uh, the judge signing it was the biggest thing. We've had the attorney general sign off on it. So now it's just a little stuff of us getting titles changed, uh, deeds, all that kind of stuff, and uh, then moving towards uh, the new organization. What are the benefits for the community and the fire company for this merge? Uh, well, with the merger, uh, what they're going to see is, you know, it'll only be coming out as one fund drive. Um, we'll be doing fundraisers. You know, there won't be duplication, and we also won't be duplicating services. So once we're finished sitting down and getting everything squared away, we're going to look at all the equipment we have and making sure that if we have duplicate equipment, being able to sell that off, put it back into the fire company, and uh, just looking at, at those aspects. Uh, we're, we don't don't want or feel that we should have duplication of services and uh, we're trying to do what's uh, monetarily best for all of the residents uh, since they do support us with their donations and everything else we feel that we should uh, make sure the money we're spending is done strategically and appropriately not to uh, waste it on on unneeded stuff is there anything else you want to add about the picnic or about the merging um, as far as the picnic, we just hope everybody will come out and support us. Um, it is one; it is our biggest fundraiser of the year, um, and there'll only be this one in town this year uh, for the fire companies since we are going to be together. Um, and as far as the merger between us and the Keystone Fire Company, both companies uh, have been waiting for this to happen um, anxiously, and uh, we are very grateful that we are almost at the end of that uh, story, so we can begin a new chapter in our organization. This is FYI News 13 Sports. 
It's another Dave Day here on the Sportscast. Dave Seaman, the sports editor at the Standard Speaker, joins us once again. And Dave, some people get very excited when the brackets are released for the NCAA tournament. I love once a year, Jim Burns, the director of District 18 Little League, comes, drops off the Little League brackets here at Channel 13. And I get so excited. It's a great time of year. And Dave, before we went on, I was talking a little bit about people behind the scenes in local sports. And Jim Burns is one of those good guys who every year tries to make this tournament fair, really, really cares about the kids and puts together a pretty good tournament. Uh, yeah, th that's the case. It is one of my favorite times of year. We get to cover a lot of exciting events on the high school level, minor league level, even professional and college level. And But when you get the, those tournament brackets come out, uh, it's always an exciting. When's it going to be in the paper? When's it going to be in the paper? It will be in the paper, so people have to look forward to it. And Dave, I don't know about you guys, but definitely here too. We hear a lot from parents who are excited about to see the kids. But even if you're not a parent of a kid playing Little League right now, these All-Stars tournaments are exciting because it really is the future. We were talking about a few names who came up who are playing now at the varsity level for some high schools. Joey Bear and Jordy Arias. You mentioned Charlie Karchner. There's a very good West Hazleton team a few years ago. I remember Hope Kinney, I believe, who's on the softball team for the Hazleton area Cougars who played for, I believe, the Hazleton All-Stars. So a lot of big names. And you went back even far further than that. Well, you go back to Russ Kanzler and Justin Gutsy, Kyle Landis, and Joe Nicholas. Uh, then there's Kyle Dempsey. It's just the, the players. Then you go even into Tamaqua. Tamaqua's had a fantastic Little League program. A lot of the standout players on the Tamaqua, great, uh, Tamaqua's great teams and the, the Marion great teams got their start at the Tamaqua Little League, too. So uh, what I like about the Little League, though, it, it, it does, you say about the future, but it takes you back in time, too, to... Uh, a lot of people, uh, the, 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 our older followers, uh, they remember when it was my school against your school. Well, Little League's a little bit like that. It's my town against your town, uh, our boys, now girls, uh, going against your boys and girls. So a uh, little bit of pride there involved. I remember going into a pizza place once. I lived down in Cunningham now, and I went over on the other side of the valley, and they were like, whoa, you're in Valley East territory now. And it was it was funny to hear that. Like you said, some really, really good rivalry. So we will have coverage. So will the standard speaker of our local Little League tournaments coming up. District 18 starts next Friday. What about some other summer sports, Dave, that the standard speaker will be covering? You mentioned golf tournaments are a big thing you guys have had information in on now. Yeah, there'll be golf tournaments. There'll be features. Uh, Eric, Steve, and myself juggling vacations at the, at the time, too. Uh, the baseball tournament will be uh, most of our uh, take up most of our coverage but uh, there'll be some features uh, Steve Stallone was at a meeting earlier this week uh, uh, re regarding the PIAA and their their proposed uh, realignments so uh, look for that coming up uh, we'll be working on that uh, Eric Schultz has some uh, features that he's been working on uh, Penn State alumni dinner is this week so uh, a lot of things happening a lot of exciting things in the standard speaker. Let's go national now, Dave. LeBron James, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they lose the NBA Finals. I'm going to be honest, it takes a lot to draw me into the NBA, but LeBron's that one guy I will stop and say, okay, I'm going to watch an NBA game. A lot of people giving him flack after this with his record in the Finals after another loss. I don't think it's fair. You know, LeBron, a great player. From everything I heard, he threw this team on his back, almost did this one by himself. Uh, he, he did. Um, uh, it, uh, and don't forget, he had two All-Stars that were injured, too, that didn't play in the Finals. Well, Kyrie Irving was hurt earlier in the season, or early in the, in the finals, uh, so he missed most of the finals. And uh, uh, Love was hurt, their big center, uh, missed most of the playoffs. So they didn't have a full team uh, to get take the Golden State Warriors. Uh, it's going to go down as one of the, the, the best teams in NBA recent NBA history, at least. Um, to take them to six games, and we're in almost every game. Uh, it says a lot, uh, not only about LeBron James, but uh, the, the teammates that he had this season. And Golden State seems like a fan favorite for casual fans, someone like me, a team that's fun to watch and kind of overshadowed with LeBron James, but that's the type of player that he is. Finally, Dave, I've been following the Women's World Cup very closely. It was nice to see women's soccer on Fox, just regular Fox Network on Tuesday night as the women's team got the big victory. They win Group D and a lot of attention being paid to this Women's World Cup. It's nice to see the young female fans in attendance. And my wife, Dave, gets so excited. She says, you don't see a lot of female athletic events getting this much coverage, this much popularity. So very, very good time of year for women's sports. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you go back to 99 when the Women's World Cup team took the nation by storm. Uh, I think it introduced a sport to a lot of young girls, a lot of young female athletes. They were inspired by it, my own daughters included. Uh, not that they went on to become soccer players, but just the, the passion that those uh, young ladies had at that time. And uh, they won the World Cup, and I didn't even realize that that was the last time that the U.S. won the World Cup, too. So I, I guess a little chip on the shoulder for the American team this season. If you haven't watched 
very exciting. I'll tell you what, as a soccer player, I love to slide tackle. It seems like the women really go after it, and they just, no regard, they just, they're going after that ball. Not as much either trying to get the calls on the field, like the men sometimes just go down very easy looking for a free kick. Just my opinion there. Dave, it's always fun having you on. We'll maybe see you again next week, maybe not as we work things out with the summertime, but that's another Dave Day in the books. Hey, look, everyone, it's the FYI standard speaker scoreboard. The Iron Pigs and the Bison finished a suspended game on Tuesday. The Iron Pigs won that one 3 to 1. Russ Kanzler was 0 for 3 in that game with a walk. In their regularly scheduled game, the Pigs lost 3 to 1, and Kanzler was 0 for 3 in that game as well with a strikeout. The Rail Riders, they're now 10 games over 500 with a win over Rochester on the road on Tuesday night. In the majors, it was just one of those nights. Cubs manager Joe Madden told MLB after his team's 6 0 loss to Cleveland. It just seems like the day after an off day, we lose 6 0. Madden continued. According to the article, the Cubs are 2 and 6 after an off day. That's sports for tonight. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report first tonight. Art classes are now being offered at the Hazleton Art League for the summer semester. New classes have been added, including landscape painting, abstract painting, studio jewelry, and more. Become an Art League member and receive a discount on the class fee. For more information, just call 570-817-1075. Our next announcement, Cunningham United Methodist Church will be holding a worship picnic on Sunday, July 26th at 10.30 a.m. The event will be held at Whispering Willows Park in Cunningham. The Cunningham United Methodist Church is located at 411 Main Street, and all are welcome to attend. For more information, just call 570-788-3960. Next announcement, a Poker Run Motorcycle Benefit for Jim McGran will be held Saturday, July 18th. The riders will start at 4th Street Pub in West Hazleton beginning at 9.30. After departing at 11 a.m., the ride will stop at three more locations until finally ending at Jonathan's Nest for food, drinks, dancing, and more. For more information, just call 570-987-4105. And finally, Lackawanna College 501 Vine Street in Scranton will be holding a Squirrel Girls Tech Camp for girls in grades 4 through 6. The camp explores STEM topics such as 3D printing, computer science, programming, animation, game creation, and much more. The inclusive camp is open to the first 20 registrants. For more information, just call 570-961-7810 at tonight's Talk of the Town. Here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers on FYI. Pick 2, 1, 2, pick 3, 2, 7, 8, pick 4, 5, 6, 8, 3, and pick 5, 8, 4, 4, 0, 7. Our winning lottery numbers on FYI are brought to you by Boyer Insurance Agency. They have two locations to serve you. One location is in Cunningham on Sugarloaf Avenue. The other is in Nescapec on Broad Street. You can call Boyer in Cunningham at 570-788-3543 and in Nescapec at 570-752-7683. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Michael Sterick of Sugarloaf. Michael, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. Remember, the McAdoo Fire Company Bazaar is this weekend, and on Friday night, it all starts with a fire truck parade that is at 7 p.m. in McAdoo. That's it for FYI tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone.